One of the most demoralizing parts of the trading journey is not having support from close family and friends and uh, pursuing something that you would love to pursue, but not having the people you love support you in that journey. So what I want to do in this video is, is shed some insights on how you can handle these types of situations because they can be incredibly challenging to deal with throughout your journey. And I want to share a little story with you, which has been very impactful in my journey and in my life. And then I'm going to bring up the iPad and we're going to dig into it a little bit deeper. I'm going to share some ideas with you that I know are going to be useful. A man and his son were going to the market on a donkey. As they were walking along by the donkey side, a farmer passed them and said, You fools, what is a donkey for but to ride upon? So the man put the boy on the donkey and they went on their way. But soon they, they passed a group of men. One of them said, See the lazy youngster? He lets his father walk while he rides. So the man ordered his boy to get off and got on himself. But they hadn't gone far when they passed two women. One of the women said to the other, shame on the lazy man to let his poor little son trudge along. Well, the man didn't know what to do, but at last he took his boy up before him on the donkey. By this time, they had come to the town and the passerbys began to point at them. The man stopped and asked them what they were scoffing at. The men said, aren't you ashamed of yourself for overloading that poor donkey of yours, you and your son? The moral of the story, if you try to please everyone, you will please no one. Look inwards for what you want out of your life, set your goals, and relentlessly work on achieving them every single day. The more you try and please other people and subordinate to authority figures, the more and more you're going to displease yourself. And I'm convinced that every single person has an idea of who they want to be or what they would love to accomplish. If you're watching this, it's probably most likely you want to be a very successful trader. You want to be independent financially. You want to make money to be able to provide for yourself, to provide for your loved ones, for your family, and even beyond that as well. You're probably an ambitious type that has big plans and big goals and and probably wants to make a lot of money, not only for themselves, but to help other people as well. You may be entrepreneurial. You may have a lot of ideas and business ideas that you want to pursue and grow. You're probably someone that's focused on their health and their fitness and that wants the best out of themselves. And you're probably someone who's into their personal development and you want to get sharp and, and, and be very smart and intelligent and emotionally intelligent. So chances are, if you're watching this, you probably have a general awareness of this idea that you know you have an image of who you would love to be. And I'm convinced every single human being has that. But the thing that stops them from going off and pursuing that and being that individual is typically what they think other people think of them. And it's typically this idea of, oh, I know what I want to be, I know what I want to do, but what would my family or friends and my loved ones think of me? Okay, so I love this parable of the donkey and the man, the father and the son, because it shows that no matter what you do, no matter what path you go down, you're going to have people who criticize you. You're going to have people who dislike you. You're going to have people who disagree with you. You're going to have people who are negative and naysayers. But that's regardless of what path you go down. You go down the path of pleasing your family and your friends. You're going to have naysayers. You're going to have challenges. Or you go down the path that you would love to go down that more entrepreneurial path, then you're still going to have challenges. You're still going to have naysayers. Okay, so you're not going to escape the criticism or the challenge. Now, I'd love to give this slight different perspective on it. And uh, personally, I don't come from the opinion that you should get rid of criticism. Personally, I don't come from the opinion that you should get rid of the negative people in your life. Nor do I think that they're bad or evil or have, you know, anything like that. I actually think I actually welcome criticism constructive criticism. And I want to use this little analogy here. Let's imagine that you are an individual in the wild. Okay. And let's imagine all you had was prey. All right. You got a predator and a prey. All you had was prey. You had prey that you could eat and that you could consume. And uh, yeah, all you had was prey. Now, if you just had prey, which we can also use as an analogy for positive or support, if you just had prey and all these things, supportive things and things you could consume, 
as an individual in the wild, you would get very gluttonous and fat. You would lose your fitness. And eventually you'd become a very easy target because you're very fat and slow and weak. So if you only had prey and support and positive, you'd eventually become very gluttonous, slow, fat, you'd lose your fitness, and eventually you'd be a high target, you'd, you'd lead to death. But let's imagine all you had was predator. All you had was challenge and negative and uh, naysayers and negative people in your life. And this was maybe a tiger or a bear, let's go big bear. Right. And if you only had predator, what would happen? And you had no prey. Well, you'd get so burnt out from running around, you become emaciated, you'd become incredibly skinny, you'd become very slim and weak, and you would eventually die out. So with both polarities, if you only have the predator, an extreme predator response, or if you only have an extreme prey, one or the other on both extremes, both extremes eventually lead to death. One leads to emaciation, weak death. The other one leads to gluttony, weak death. So on both extremes, positive, negative, support, challenge, you eventually die out. Now, this isn't just an analogy. You can see it in your life. When you, when you tend to get supported early in your life and you have a lot of support and you have a lot of, you know, people do things for you, you tend to become dependent on that. And you're not as independent. You're not easily able to take care of yourself because you're now demanding and more dependent on other people. Whereas if you had a very challenging upbringing and you were challenged a lot in your perception and, and that type of stuff, you tend to become more independent. You tend to look after yourself more so. So, so it's not difficult to see in our, in our life. But the point I'm trying to make here is that in both extremes, you eventually die out. However, let's imagine you were in the wild and you had an equal amount of prey and predator. You had people that were challenging you, but you also had people that were supporting you. You had things that were trying to eat you and kill you, right? But you also had things that you could eat and kill. In this situation, you would have enough to keep yourself filled and healthy and fit. And you'd also have enough to fight and defend from so you were strong. So in a situation where you have both predator and prey in equal degree, you grow maximally. You have maximum growth and development. So, so in both extremes, prey or predator, you tend to die out and burn. But if you have enough prey to keep yourself alive, keep yourself fit and healthy and ready to go, and you get your defenses up, you get your weapons, and you also have predator that keeps you on your toes and keeps challenging you and keeps helping you innovate to get stronger and to get fitter and to get more defenses, you grow maximally. So maximum growth and development happens on the border of the two, on the border of positive and negative, on the border of support and challenge, on the border of predator and prey, on the border of uh, criticism and, and people supporting you, right? So I, I, what I'm trying to communicate here with this message is that no matter what you do, people are going to challenge you, but the challenges aren't necessarily a bad thing. If you learn to see through constructive criticism and you learn to use that to your advantage, you ask yourself, okay, this person's challenging me, who's supporting me? And you see that, all right, I've got both support and challenge in my life. Those people's values that I challenge that maybe have more of a family and social value when I go off and want to become a successful trader, they're probably going to challenge me because in their mind, they're thinking, oh, this guy's not really working on his relationships and family. He's more focused on that money stuff. But then you're also being supported by your people in your trading community who have a high value in trading and finances because, because it's just a different value system. So if as an individual, you can train yourself to recognize that, all right, this person is challenging me because I'm challenging what they value. They have a high value on family and relationships. I'm going off and focusing on my finance. Okay, they're not gonna see eye to eye with me. But I'm also being supported over here by people who have a high value on money and finance and business and being more entrepreneurial. So I'm getting both. In that situation, you keep yourself grounded, you keep yourself present, 
you recognize, you know what, I am kind of neglecting my family and relationships right now. And that scenario may become a little bit disempowered in, or I may start to focus on that. Or I may focus on it later. But you're going to get both support and challenge in your life. So, so something that's been very beneficial to me because I'm probably, you know, just like a lot of you guys watching this, an example of someone who hasn't gone down the conventional path necessarily. And you get criticized, you get challenged. But I've always been on the lookout for, all right, I've got someone who's challenging me because I'm challenging their values. I'm going against what they value. But I've also got this supporter over here who's supporting me and, and puffing me up. And I get both. And it's important to be aware of that dynamic that you're going to get both supported and challenged depending on whether you support and challenge people's values. Okay. It's also important to recognize that you don't want support all the time because when you get supported all the time, you tend to become dependent. You tend to become lazy. You tend to stagnate and you don't innovate as much. Okay. So recognize that criticism, constructive criticism can actually be quite good. Keep you fit, keep you healthy, keep you growing, keep you innovating, keep you thinking about new ideas. Okay. So first and foremost, recognize that no matter what pathway you go down, you're going to get criticized and challenged. It's necessary for your growth, your continued growth and development. You're going to have naysayers. You're going to have challenges. Welcome it. Recognize that you're just probably just not that you're not seeing eye to eye with the value systems, but also recognize you're always going to have support. People's values you support, they're going to support you right back. Now, my suggestion is to always look inwards for what you love and what you would love to do. And then go off and set goals, clear goals in every area of life or in that area that you'd love to pursue. And then break those goals down into high priority actions and then focus on relentlessly pursuing those high priority actions until you accomplish your goals and just rinse and repeat. And the truth is you have that much certainty and belief in yourself and what you'd love to accomplish. And you're so clear on the end goal and your mission and what you would love to go off and accomplish. Then really the, the, the naysayers and the supporters, it doesn't really matter to be fair. You don't really pay attention to that. Some people support you, some people challenge you, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You're just so focused and you're so, you're so certain in your own mission and your own journey that you just stick with that. And no matter what happens in the, on the outside, you don't really care about that. You just focus every day, showing up, working, knowing what you love to do and knowing, knowing exactly what you're doing that day and you just get it done. So if you're, a, if you're a trader who's getting challenged out there, recognize that you're probably getting supported as well, probably by your trading community. And, uh, and there's going to be both. Don't neglect the challenge. Sometimes the challenges have very constructive criticism there that's important to hear, important to take into consideration and recognize but also get good at saying, no, thank you. I know exactly what I'm doing. I figured out the most efficient and effective path for me to accomplish my goals. I'm going to pursue that right now. And hey, I may be wrong, but I can always come back to what you suggested later on. And then just go off, have this relentless attitude about yourself respectfully and go off and pursue your goals. It's my suggestion. Um, but it's an interesting parable, isn't it? The, the donkey, the father and the son. It's one to continuously remind yourself of because the last thing you want to do is get to the end of your life and realize you've pleased everybody else, but you've pissed off the one person that matters most, which is yourself.